My name's Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. It's December the 24th. And of course, this is the time of year where many people spend time with their families. Uh, as we close out the year, it is a holiday season, whether you're Jewish, whether you're Christian, uh, or, or getting ready for the new year. And at this time, I know that Many of you guys are traveling, going to see your family, things like that. So regardless of how you look at the season, it is certainly a time where a lot of people have off and they do spend time with their families. And we're really busy ourselves here at Israeli News Live and we wanted to share some things with you guys today. And of course also be going into a news broadcast a little bit later, but I wanted to actually share with you some good news. Uh, when I say good news, I realize, of course, I love the gospel, but I'll be doing that over on uh, Israel, excuse me, Danun Institute of Biblical Research. But I'm talking about some acts of kindness. And there were several videos, actually two videos, that caught my attention over here over the last couple of days that inspired me to want to do a broadcast solely on things that are good things that are nice, some acts of kindness. I mean, this is the time of year that a lot of people are giving gifts, etc., depending on how you traditionally believe in your family. Uh, and myself, I just like to look at the giving of humanity, the giving of kindness, the giving of love. And we wanted to share some of those things with you, some stories that we saw that have actually touched our hearts. And this one right here, I'm not really sure where this happened at, it says random acts of kindness, biker lifestyle. And uh, I just thought it was very interesting. It's one of the ones that caught my attention in this action, not in the last couple of days, but I actually saw this a couple of months back. We shared it on our Twitter page here. We're just gonna play that for you here uh, and show you. And this, this biker group is riding along the highway here. They see an elderly woman trying to cross the road. No one's really stopping to let her cross the road automatically. So the guy gets off his bike, the rest of the group stops and waits as well, and walks over, takes her by the hand, and walks her across the road. You know, it reminds me when I was growing up uh, that I was always taught by my father, you know, if you see an elderly person, they're trying to get across the road, help them. And that's just been something that's always stood out in my whole life are things like this. And then to see this, this display of kindness, not just stop, but the man got off and helped her across the road. That's just amazing to me. Uh, just another amazing act of kindness there. That was over on Twitter. That was shared actually by Alexis uh, on their Twitter page there, uh, A-L-E-X-I-S at Alex22DAS. And then there's other stories that caught my attention as well. This one here I seen just recently on um, uh, on Twitter, but it wasn't this particular part of the broadcast that caught my attention. It's about a man, man by the name of Sir Nicholas Winton. And he is a, a man that rescued more than, I think it was over 600 children from Czechoslovakia during the Holocaust years. And he rescued those children and, and smuggled them out of the country into Great Britain. He never said anything about what he did. For 50 years, he was silent about one of the greatest feats that had been done during the Holocaust. Until so his wife happened upon a notebook in the attic, a a, kind of like a photo album that had recorded every one of these children. I'm going to play this for you because I want you to be able to see this for yourself just to see how remarkable what happened here. And I will note as well that Mr. Winton died in 2015. He had lived to be 106 years old, seemingly in remarkable condition his entire life. I believe that he was blessed because of the kindness he had shown to God's children. Now, it doesn't matter if it's Jewish children or even Gentile children, but the mere fact that he showed kindness to children reminds me of the words of Yeshua when he said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God. Let's listen to this here. Remarkable. There are some stories which we are not only an audience to, but may become their participants. This was shared on a local news channel, uh, I think here in the United States. Listen in. 
mouth by accident after this scrapbook surfaced after gathering dust for decades. Once it did though, it set about a whole chain of incredible events. That's me before I left for England. But until 1988, I had no idea who had rescued me from all but certain death. It was this old man who had saved my life and that of hundreds of others in the Second World War. Yet for 50 years, we knew nothing about him. Before my children. This is his scrapbook. There are all kinds of fascinating pictures in it. Perhaps you can see, this is a picture of Nicholas Winton himself with one of the children he rescued. If you look at the very... I need to pause this just for a second to share with you something that's not being displayed about in this particular uh, footage. Sir Nicholas Winton, uh, who lived in Great Britain, he is at this televised uh, program totally unknown to himself why he was actually invited. I don't know what story he was given, but it was unknown to him. His eyes are already tearing up when he sees that they actually have his very notebook. The very notebook that his wife had found in the attic and gave to the journalist that then later began to put the story together, tracking down the survivors of the children in this. Let's continue to listen. The very back of this scrapbook, fascinating things in it, all the letters. But back here is the list of all the children this is Vera Dermont, now Vera Gissing. We did find her name on his list. Vera Gissing is with us here tonight. Hello, Vera. And uh, I should tell you that you are actually sitting next to Nicholas Winton. we were given to come to England and um, another of the children that you saved. Can I ask, is there anyone in our audience tonight who owes their life to Nicholas Winton? If so, could you stand up please? It's just amazing to me to see something like this. You know, my own family, many were victims of the Holocaust. And I think what's probably most inspiring about that story there is the fact that he never asked for notoriety, never said anything about what he had done. He did his act of kindness without anyone knowing. You know, it reminds me of when Yeshua says that there will be those, and I'm just paraphrasing, on that great day when it will be said, Lord, where did we feed you? When did we clothe you? And when you were hungry? And then he spoke and he says, you know, the different parables that he says there, you know, that I was... I was hungry and you fed me and I was a stranger and you took me in and we know this story and I don't have it in front of me. I apologize. I wish I would have thought about that at the time. Um, but this man, to see the tribute that's given to him now is nothing compared to what he'll see on the other side. And I think that was very beautiful that they took the time to bring together so many of these children, and I believe it was over 600 children that he rescued 
and got to Britain. I want to share a couple of other ones here with you and then I'm going to close off with one last one and it's actually the very one that inspired me. The one there of Sir Winton was the the second one I saw recently that I felt this would be a beautiful thing to do with our listeners is to share some beautiful acts of kindness. Uh, this was one I saw on Fox uh, 32 again is on a website it's called a random act of kindness a makeover uh, uh, it says for a and I don't care for a homeless man and uh, it's two black young uh, black men I don't want to say young don't know exactly how old they are there uh, but they wanted to do something for someone homeless and they went to a couple of people that just tell them to get out of their face but this one man received their kindness kindness openly and I know there's many of these things that happen many people that have done wonderful things and I'd love to share all their stories but I want to share this one here with you because it kind of touched my heart as well listen to this two friends a young preacher and an East Oakland barber decided they didn't want to just talk about helping people this holiday season they wanted to actually do it let's find a homeless person and give them a makeover you only see this on Leon Brown television. from Solemn Temple it could have been more gratifying it touched me so much I had goosebumps the two men say they set out Monday morning looking for a homeless person willing to accept some help we went up to a couple people and we gave them this offer and it was like man get away from me eventually they came upon a man living in a tent on International oh, Boulevard 72 year old Norman Walton whom they call Mr. Norman and his dog Midnight. They videotaped the encounter. Right, we seen this Mr. Norman with his Christmas hat on and his puppy, and that caught my heart. Mr. Norman told them he's a recovering drug addict, a grandfather who hit rock bottom and stayed yeah. there. Although my living condition is not you know, up to stand, but they still love the grandpa. Of course. The two men say they're struggling financially themselves, but they took Mr. Norman to a store and bought him new clothes, took him to a restaurant, cleaned him up, and gave him a haircut, a complete makeover. You know, I had to um, clean the clipper, <laughs> but he, it, it worked out. It worked out. Yeah. To cap it off, they gave Mr. Norman $500 in cash. The two men hadn't seen Mr. Norman since the day they helped him, so they decided to come back here where they first found him to see if he was still around. And there he and Midnight were. Mr. Norman showed us the bicycle he bought with some of the cash the two men had given him. People didn't care about people like us. Mr. Norman says the generosity he received will push him to get off the street. But nothing will change till he changes himself. When you guys have me, I kind of felt, me. So I made a change myself. That remains to be seen. There is no happy ending, at least not yet. But for these two, the happy ending is in the helping. You know, the fact that they did it, that's a beautiful ending in itself. Um, all right, so let's go on. These things just touch my heart. I have to tell you, friends, they really do, you know. And, you know, there, and I'll tell you something. There's no act of kindness that you can do so, for someone. That God doesn't remember it you know and and I know a lot of times this this time of year as the year closes out a lot of people think of that but always remember try to do something kind for someone someone in need no matter what time of year it is uh, this is another beautiful one as well and it's not so much someone that is poor but it's about uh, CBS uh, this morning they did this broadcast back earlier this year about a teacher and it's just a beautiful story and what the students did and how the teacher had inspired their lives. I want to play this clip for you as well. And, uh, and then we're going to go to the last one there for today that I'll share with you. Uh, and, and, and I really, on the other one, I'll, I'll get to it in a minute. I've got to share something with you about you that. A professor at Texas A&M University. He teaches his students not just through lectures, but also through actions. Omar Villafranc is at the university in College Station, Texas with how kindness can be a very powerful tool in the classroom. Omar, good morning. Good morning. Henry Musoma is a business professor here at Texas A&M, and if you look up above me, you can see that's him hanging right there on the, on the leadership banner. Now, every semester he has hundreds of students, but he makes it a point to try to learn their names so he can make some sort of personal connection. And now those students are showing the teacher what they've learned. Guess what happened? It's hard for students to fall asleep in Dr. Henry Musoma's class. Everybody stand up. He's always doing something extra. 
extra engaged, extra supportive to the people he cares about most, his students. I'm reminded of a friend of mine who said he's not an educator, he's an edutainer. But it's not just in his teaching that Dr. Musoma has shown he is more than willing to do something extra. When Ashton Robinson told Dr. Musoma she couldn't come to class because she didn't have a babysitter, the answer was simple. Bring him to class. A little fussiness didn't keep the professor from finishing his lesson. For Jake Ross, Dr. Musoma meant so much to him that Jake's fiance surprised him by having Dr. Musoma officiate their wedding. He even helped Elizabeth Pope find a job. He knew that I loved business and medicine and he immediately was like, you know, I've got the perfect job for you. But how does someone learn to be kind? For Musoma, his education started more than 8,000 miles away, over four decades ago, where it gets good. in the African country of Zambia. Both my parents worked hard. My father was one of the first people in his family to go to college. Like his father, Musoma wanted an education, but an American one seemed out of reach. No, sir. Too far too expensive. But then he met Albert Cates, a U.S. State Department official who changed his mind. How did he convince you? He said, here's my business card. Come to my office tomorrow. And guess what, Omar? That night, America, America, God shed his grace on me. I did not sleep. I was so excited. He gave me an idea. What was it? The possibility. Cates helped Musoma immigrate to America in the mid-90s. After finishing community college, he earned a scholarship at Texas A&M graduated and started teaching. In his classes, he often brings up the story of Cates and possibility. A lesson Musoma's former student, Sam White, remembers well. He talked about his journey to America, and at the end of every story, he would mention you know, how that this man took him in by dinner and convinced him to go to Texas to study. So when it came time to pay back Dr. Musoma for all his kindness, Sam knew what to do. The Starbucks card didn't feel right to me, right? So I was thinking, what could I do for him that would be awesome? He scoured social media sites and government records. For two years, he searched and nearly gave up. Finally, a breakthrough with the help of... That breakthrough was he was looking for Albert Cates. The very man the U that worked for the U.S. State Department, working all the way over in Africa, that helped this man make it to the United States and become a great contributor of kindness at Texas A&M, professor. Um, uh, just, just a beautiful story here, and I want to continue to play on it there because it just touches my heart. He received an email from Cates and helped Musoma reconnect with the past. I ran to uh, uh, the business school that morning with this email I printed out and I was trying to play it cool, but of course I'm freaking out. You're a wreck at this point. Yeah, it's like, read this right now. It's like throwing it at him. What was his reaction? It was complete silence. So I wasn't totally prepared for that because he's one of the most talkative people I've ever met and he's always got something to say. So I handed him the email and uh, he read through it and then he put it in his pocket and said, thank you. He gave me a hug. Decades after their first meeting, Dr. Musoma and Albert Cates were reunited. A life of kindness that has come full circle. When my son Joshua, who's about to be seven, sees me in front of my students, and then when they leave, he looks at me and he wants to put on a little tie when I walk with him, and he says, Daddy, I love that you're kind. And if when I'm gone, if that's what my son says of me, I'll rest in peace. Now, one of the life lessons that... You know, that's an amazing story about Dr. Masoma and, of course, the, class, the, the, the kindness that he's always shown to his students as well. And, of course, you know, Al Cates, the state, uh, <laughs> the state, uh, excuse me, get my brain to work here, uh, the state representative of the United States working over in Africa that helped him to make that trip here. And an educator that is having such an impact on students' lives that they would go to that extent to try to make something wonderful, wonderful for him to happen as well. It kind of reminds me of a teacher I had when I was growing up in high school. Her name was Sarah Klusman. And I had her from early as eighth grade. And I was fortunate enough 
that she moved from the middle school that I was uh, going to at the time to the high school that I went to and I had her ninth, tenth, uh, skip the, no I'm sorry, skip the tenth year but then I had her in the eleventh and twelfth grade as well. And she's kind of a tough teacher, kind of strict English teacher, also uh, uh, did the news journal paper staff as well which I was a part of. Uh, but one thing about her was she cared about her students and a lot of people never saw that in her and I did and uh, she always had a lasting impact on my entire life. Um, in closing, I want to share one other beautiful story and this is the very story that started me on this journey here uh, and it was about President Putin and, uh, and I've seen this with very few world leaders ever that show the acts of kindness the way they do. I've seen it with President Bashar al-Assad of Syria and his wife Amsa. I've seen it with them. And, but very few do you ever see in, in government leaders that you see this other than Al Qaeda, who we just saw that worked for the State Department uh, over in Africa that did this for this uh, for, for Professor uh, that, that we're just sharing there with you. But President Putin did something recently that touched my heart as well, and that was after he had his annual um, media event where he invites the, the journalists in for, uh, to this annual event where he answers questions from the journalists. At the very end, he made, made it possible for a young journalist, um, who is just a young girl, I think she was like 12 years old, that he would do an interview with her as well. The young girl is blind but she is aspiring to be a journalist and she wanted the opportunity to be able to interview President Putin and he gave her that exact opportunity. And we see this time and time again with him, of the things that he does. And I wanted to share that story with you as well. Listen to this. Journalists, uh, despite that marathon, uh, he spent several hours uh, talk, talking with hundreds of them and also made time to speak to a teenage Russian girl who's been registered blind and hopes to be a top reporter herself. Great. She met the country's leader afterwards. Here's her that way. Hello, how are you? Hello. I would like to ask you some questions. Did you always dream of becoming president? Or before you wanted to be, for example, an astronaut? Honestly, I never dreamed of becoming president, and I had no intention. This happened by chance. Probably. At first, it was very difficult for you. Can you describe your first days as president? Yes, it wasn't easy. These were very difficult years for the country as a whole. We were balancing with survival. There was a very difficult situation with the economy and security as well. What was your most memorable day as president? It is very difficult to say, but we just talked about this at a big press conference. The most striking events of this year were the presidential election and the World Cup. Do you make a wish a new year? Yes, this wish was a secret, but I can share it with you. I wish all our wishes will come true. May I touch you? Of course. You are very handsome. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was just so amazing, especially when she asked, can I touch you? And he granted her to be able to do so. You know, and I'm sure there's other world leaders that have done wonderful acts of kindness as well. But when I was trying to find some, it was kind of difficult. I did find the the one beautiful story there of uh, Al Cates, the State Department, and what he did for this amazing professor. Um, and that was, of course, one that I could find uh, from the United States and wanted to share that with you. I hope this kind of good news is a blessing to you. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, you can always go online in the animal world and constantly see good news there because there's so much kindness that is being shared, especially on Twitter. I'm always retweeting a lot of tweets there uh, that people put up about uh, things that animals do, especially those animals that are showing kindness and care for other animals in the world. Uh, and as well as what humans do for animals. I think that's something that sometimes we kind of leave off. Uh, something that can kind of make, make your day, make it a little bit brighter, especially in a world where the human species is getting far away from kindness. I'm Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live. 
uh, Shabbat, excuse me, not Shabbat Shalom, but Erev Tov Chavrim. Uh, good evening.